and he'll feel that void right away where he can just bring that energy. And he's almost like, man, if he gets on in the right scheme, a 10 to 12, maybe even 15 sack guy every year, right? Very, very, uh, he's a producible uh, player, if that makes sense. So that for me, man, as well, that's crazy to say that, is the end. <laughs> gotcha, man. Gotcha. Gotcha. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be mad at either, either of those picks at pick seven because again, with Danico Autry gone, we need that for sure, Jacques. So facts, no paper, no facts for sure, 100%. So Jacques, so we're basically saying we know that the Titans will probably pick receiver, offensive line and things like that for sure. But I have a question for you as well, man, as far as the seventh pick. What do you think is the likelihood that we trade the seventh pick? And, and just say if we did, say if we did trade the seventh pick, mm -hmm. what should we get in return? Man, if that, that's, a, that's a lot of capital, right? If we're trading the seventh pick, I would at least need we, – we, we don't have a third-round pick this year, right? If I can get a third-round or a second-round pick plus a first-round pick from next year, I want that capital, right? If, if we decide to go that route, and I know that's a lot of capital, but to trade up from maybe like the Bills who need a, a receiver, right? And I'm not saying Malik Neighbors will be able to fall that low, but if, he, if he's in play. What are you willing to give up? Me, I need a second or third round this year, plus your first next year in order for you to move up to get that seventh round pick. Um, and I would not move down more than maybe five or six spots, right? I still want to stay in that top 15, 15-ish range, right? The lowest I'll probably go is 12 or 13. And and the and I'm not even gonna trade up because I mean again we're in a good position and a good spot to to pick a playmaker in this year's draft. So and hypothetically, if we do decide to trade the pick, that's the capital that I want uh, for that particular uh, um, spot. What about you, Hope? So I would so, tell you this, man. Um, I really think the likelihood is is high. Actually, I actually think the Titans might look to trade the seventh pick. I do. Um, because to the point that you stated that we don't have a third round pick, right? Now we have two picks in the first 50, which is good, but then we don't pick again until the fourth round. So I would love to stay at seven. We got the poll question out there, by the way. I would love to stay at seven because you could get a general, a generational player at seven, whether it be an offensive lineman, a good receiver, even a corner. You know, that's a really good pivotal spot because we haven't been there in years this high. But we need players. We need young. We need youth. Based on the fact that our drafts over the last several years have been piss poor, we really need more players. So if we were to trade, I would understand maybe to trade down a few picks to maybe add a second round pick or maybe add a third round pick or whatever. I actually am starting to think that maybe we will trade the pick to go down. Now, I don't think we're going to go down like in the 20s. Maybe draft, you know, trade down maybe – four or five more picks and still get an offensive lineman or a receiver. I, I still think you could still fulfill the position you're looking for to add another player. But I think it's likely, I think it could be likely that we trade the pick, go down and pick another, an extra pick, maybe even two extra picks. If you could really muster that if somebody really wants to jump up and get a quarterback, if the team needs a quarterback, I'd be like, Hey, you, you, we need two more picks to get a quarterback for sure. So I think it's likely, I think it could be likely. Like, 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 like. Yep. So, yep. with that being said, Hawk, I know we talked about trades. In the second round, right, we know we got up here. Name a player you consider a sleeper that can Ooh. either snuck up into, that's helped himself in his pro day, in the draft, um, that's getting a lot of buzz, that is probably snuck up from the third round to the second round. Do you see a player out there that, that you think that can be that guy, if that makes sense. So, yes, Jock. So I've talked a lot about the Texas wide receiver, Donnie Mitchell, from Nashville, Tennessee, by the way. I've talked a lot about him, but I don't think he's a sleeper pick anymore. I think he's woke up, right? I think people might actually push him up in the first round based on what he did in the, in the 40, based on what he did last season. But let me tell you a guy that I'm looking at, man, as a sleeper in the second round, bro. I'm saying in the same position. And I'm saying opposite of Malik Neighbors. I'm saying that boy Brian Thomas from LSU, man. Dude, mm -hmm. this guy is 6'3", right? 210 pounds, ran a 4'3 and a 40 in the combine, okay? You know what, what really sparks my thoughts on Brian Thomas? He scores touchdowns. This dude had 17 touchdowns last season. 17 touchdowns, okay? 
kind of like how Justin Jefferson did when he had 22 touchdowns in his last year. This guy had 17 touchdowns last year alone, right? In a college football season, when you have Malik neighbors and you have other receivers on the team, you were able to get 17 touchdowns. To me, that's amazing, right? He has 68 catches for 1,100 yards receiving as well. Brian Thomas is a playmaker, and he's got size. He's 6'3". This guy can make plays. I like Brian Thomas as a sleeper pick in the second round. Give me Brian Thomas, man. We got the poll questions out the way out there as well, too. So, Jacques, I'm going to throw that same question to you, too, man, as far as a second round sleeper pick. Second round sleeper pick. And I like this kid, and I'm I'm going to a position that we're going to have to address, which is inside or outside linebacker, right? Linebacker, just period. And this kid is from Texas A&M, uh, Ed, Edrin Cooper. This kid, man – beast his energy his motor he's good at sideline to sideline tackling ability is nice um again he's making a, a a splash he did good in his pro day but he's making a case from him even if he can get in the first round i don't even know he'll be there in the second round how good if you go back and look at tape on this kid this kid man is amazing again shuttles nice his zone coverage is nice rushing the passer the ability he's one of those players that you can actually plug and play right away just till he till he gets up to speed and he'll solidify your linebacker for it. the kid is nice man i think i mentioned to you mentioned to him to you this past weekend as well when i was doing some homework i was like this kid is not bad man he's he's pretty solid so that's for me if if your board looks doesn't look to par when it comes to the second round look into that look into him that pull the trigger on it so that's for me gotcha gotcha Jacques. gotcha gotcha man Gotcha. So, yep. Yep. So we talk about the second round of sleeper picks, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of folks do not know the folks we just talked about. Like these are major sleeper picks, by the way. And we got, again, we got those poll questions out there as well, too. Uh, we just threw a question out there as far as the Titans. If we do not draft a receiver or an offensive tackle in the first round, what position? I mean, how would, what would be your reaction? And many folks are actually saying they would be upset. And I understand it. I do. We got questions out there as well. So, Jacques, I'm going to throw this question at you, too. Mm -hmm. So, looking at sleeper picks, you know, that's really what we want to discuss today of players and picks that folks might not know about. Give me two sleeper picks right now. Right now, give me two sleeper picks that no one is talking about that the Titans should have on their radar. Okay. So, a kid named Malik Washington, he's from University of uh, UVA. Um, this kid, I think he's about 5'8", like 184-ish. Kid is nice. He, we, the Titans have talked about looking for a slot receiver, right? And I don't, I, I don't know if everybody's seen the actual press conference that Callahan and and uh, and and crew have had. I think it was last week where they were talking about we need somebody to step up in the slot. Now you would think Traylon Burks would be that guy, but I don't, I don't know what's happened with Traylon and the confidence level and the. Even with the team itself, I, I noticed uh, uh, Coach Callahan didn't even really mention him. He mentioned him, but he didn't mention him to be like he's a solidified slot receiver. We've been looking for a slot receiver for years, right? Somebody that can be consistent. We've had guys that you can kind of plug in and be like, ah, oh, okay. Well, thing I like about Malik Washington is his ability, his rally, right? He's not the fastest guy. To be that small, you should be super, super fast. And I think that's why he's low on the boards. I think he'll be like a day three guy that can come off and and and, and make a team, a solidified team. He'll be a good kick return. But when it comes to the slot, that is his specialty. Malik Washington, if y'all haven't seen him, heard of him, go check him out. He plays with a, U, a UVA. Pretty solid uh, guy. Also, I'm going to keep it. And I know to, how, as we, we got a bonus because I'm going to let you talk about him, but I also want to say some things about him too. Uh, I'm going to okay. go to the linebacker from Notre Dame. Is a JD a veteran. Kid's pretty solid, about 6'1", I think like 250. Uh, he was the captain last year for Notre Dame. Again, another guy that you can plug and play. Um, he's really smart, man, really smart. He's very good at zone, his own coverage. Um, rushes the passer very well. Again, one of those guys that'll probably be like a day two, maybe day three, uh, a sleeper that you pick up. And he 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 actually had did a lot of extensive uh, talking and, and learning and I guess mentorship from Luke Keekley, uh the old linebacker from the Panthers. So he's trying to learn from um, good stock, right? Learning from great stock, and he's just trying to learn the game. So it's pretty smart that you can kind of come in and he can read the defenses like that. Hey, we got to restart. It says, hey, guys, you're not seeing your stream in the app. 
That's from Bleacher Report. Oh, is there oh, any way we can restart with a new event? Yes. Oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Uh, we'll end do the we stream. need to? Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Are you sure you're just going to create a whole new stream? I guess. Oh. Oh, someone house says, house. I see you. Okay. Somebody from Bleacher Report said they couldn't see us. Okay. I see you. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay, cool. Okay. Oh, we okay. apologize. Cool. <laughs> we apologize, y'all. Okay. Oh, okay. We apologize. It's okay. Right. All right. <laughs> appreciate that. Okay. Yes, yes, for sure. Thank you. Thank uh, you all. Uh, thank, thank, thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, so, yeah, that's for me, Hawk. Uh, again, looking at those two gentlemen, man, they, they're pretty solid, man, just doing extensive because we would really need to hit – especially if we don't trade and get more draft capital, we need to hit on those later round picks where they can come in and, and start. I mean, we need them, right? Rand has done a great job at building the roster yeah. where it's starting to even itself out, but we need those guys to be good depth players, one. And two, they can contribute day one and come in here. I said, if you're a seventh round pick, I don't expect you to blow the top off or just be this star, five-star player to come in right away and, and just be all pro. If you are, I mean, we, we that's a steal, right? Then you can say the Titans Absolutely. got the next Hall of Famer. But I need you to come in and at least pick it up just like that. So what about you, Hawk? Jacques, facts, no paper. So here are two sleeper picks for me, and they play the same position, okay? So Jacques and I talk a lot about the new age corners. As you all know as well, you know, we did sign, you know, our, the corners that we currently have now. Uh, you know, you look at Snead and you look at Awuzie. Those guys are solid corners. I mean, Snead is arguably the best cover corner in the league. But you can never have too many corners. A sleeper pick for me is a guy from Iowa State, TJ Tampa. Let me tell you about TJ Tampa. TJ Tampa is six foot two, two hundred pound corner, right? He wore, wore number two at Iowa State. Not only can he cover, he's a mean son of a gun too, man. He makes a lot of tackles. He's always competing. He had two interceptions last year. They barely threw it on his side. Not only can he play on the outside well, he can play in the slot well. Like, they, they played him on the best receiver no matter where he lined up. T.J. Tampa's a problem. Um, I saw a lot of tape on T.J. Tampa. He looks like a linebacker playing corner, man. But this guy here, ran, he ran a 4-4-8 four, a four, four, in the 40. So he's got speed. He's 6'2", almost looks 6'3 out there. Watch out for T.J. Tampa. You know, the, these new age corners that got height on them. You know, when you look at Sertan, you look at Devin Witherspoon, you look at guys that got height. He fits the bill. And, you know, I, I really like TJ Tampa a lot if, you're not, if you all have not seen him. He's definitely a sleeper pick. Another sleeper pick that Jacques and I have talked a lot about, especially watching the playoffs, watching, you know, even when they played Ohio State, Michigan had a dog of a corner, and that's Mike Sanders still, okay? This guy here is a dog, okay? Not only was he the leader of Michigan's defense, this guy here makes a lot of tackles. He reminds me a lot of Antoine Winfield Sr., the father that played for the Vikings. A short corner that tackles well, that covers well, and is a dog. If you've not seen Mike Sanders still play at Michigan, man, you're missing out. This guy's a sleeper pick. He probably won't be – he probably won't make the first – he's not going to make the first round. probably won't make the second round because of his height. He's mm -hmm. only 5'9". But that's what you call – that is the definition of a sleeper pick, right? A guy that gets maybe picked in the fourth round – if he's there in the fourth round, I might draft Mike Sanders still, bro, because this guy here is a dog. And when the game's going, I say, Jacques, I like this guy right here. He's a dog. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I like these two corners, man, as far as sleeper picks. I think corners is where you can really find – corners and, like, offensive guards or positions you can sort of find in the fourth and fifth round. They pan out for you. So give me Mike Sanders still, man, from the University of Michigan. Hail, hail to the victors, I guess, in Michigan. That's <laughs> why. Yes, so, sir. So, Go for it. So another funny thing, people, is that me and Hawk, we were we were doing our pre pre show, I mean things, and we took we discussed. I said, "What do you think is a good sleeper?" And I, I said to he said, "Man, that's crazy." Yes, yep. Hawk is one hundred percent correct. This kid, man, I think he's a converted wide receiver. He was a wide receiver and then converted him to DB, I believe. And his ball hawk, I mean, his ball ability skills to track the ball. And being in the right place at the right time is amazing, man. Again, like you said, the knock on him is his height. His height. He's only put five eight, I think. Five yep. eight. One five eight, eight five nine. nine. But yeah, like you know, in, in, in football, they 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 
they pad your weight, so I can really probably think he's probably at least a good 170, <laughs> 175. Maybe 5'7 and a half. Yeah, exactly, exactly, with yep. the cleats on. So, but the thing is, he's he's tough, his tenacity. He's in the in the right place at the right time, all the time, man. And just looking at this kid, I'm like, dude, this this kid is gonna he's gonna make somebody's roster one, two, and he's you can put him in the slot. He thrives in the slot. He thrives yeah. in the slot. That's yeah. one thing I've noticed. I said, man. He's pretty solid in the slot. Now, we already got Roger McCreary, who plays in the slot. I get that, right? But you can never have too many corners. Like you said, if he's in the fourth round, take him. Take him. And, it, and ladies and gentlemen, you've probably seen him, but if you haven't, number zero. He wears number zero. Check him yeah. out. The kid is dope, man. The kid is the kid is solid. I, I Again, I wish he was – he'll he be available, but I, I just can imagine teams are looking at him like, okay. But, again, only knock is his size. That's the only knock on him. Is he's little and right. That's right. It just depends, but you know that that can be debunked as well because we know we've had players with different sizes come through the NFL yeah. and blow the socks off the NFL. So yeah, that's, that's right. what that's, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Well, listen, we're going into favorite part of the show. If you watch this on Bleacher Report, man, put the comments in the comment section, man. Throw your questions out there. We're going to answer those questions. If you're watching on YouTube, you're not going to be able to. Uh, you can throw questions out there, but we won't be able to answer it on the screen. But on Bleacher Report on this show today, we can do that. Throw your questions out there. We're going to answer any question you throw out there. Let's get to our live chop up, bro. Sure. Powerhouse. The Powerhouse 615. What's up, bro? Appreciate you watching the show. He says, uh raymond keaton wide receiver of tennessee very slept on love this game yeah we've seen we in sec country man we've seen this game as well um he'll yep. be a good day day three pick as well um so for sure for sure for sure yeah yeah absolutely man and you know one thing about raymond uh raymond keaton man um you know just looking at you know at, at tennessee you know tennessee had this season uh you know throwing the football you know those guys man you know offensively you know, not like the year before where, you know, passing was at a premium. This year was OK. So, you know, so looking at what he did last year, man, you know, he he has the ability. And so, you know, I, I he might be a fifth round pick, the powerhouse 615. I don't know if you believe or agree with that, but we'll see, man. We'll right. see. Yeah, he'll yep. be, be that, those day three, day three hits, man, or whatnot. Yep. Definitely. Yep. Uh, yep. Taylor the Shield says, if Joe Alt isn't available with the seventh pick, who do you think would be the second best option? <sighs> I, me and Hulk actually <laughs> talked about this earlier. Uh, again, go ahead. I'm going to let you cook first, Hulk. And I don't know if Taylor, if you missed the show earlier or, or anything, but um, for me, okay. man, it, it's Jerry Versa, man. I, again, the, the kid from LSU, I mean, uh, Florida State. He's a plug and play man. I just again did some more extensive film on him. And at first, I wasn't on the train of, of DN going DN at that, that pick. But then when I when I was yep. doing some more film study and I had some time, I was like, man, this kid is pretty solid, man. You know, in DNs when yep. you get that chop down with on in his hand yep. placement, he knows how to maneuver his hands. You can tell he pre, they probably he probably goes through the boxing training a lot of those DNs go through. I said, man, he, he's good. His weight. I mean, the, the kid is solid, man. I like him. If 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 Joe Alt isn't available. I know Malik Davis is not going to be there. I would go to him. Like, that's for me. What about you, Alt? Okay. I'm still going offensive tackle here, man. So I'm, I'm assuming, say, if Alt's not here, Olu Fashuna will be here based upon the previous teams, the previous six, not needing an offensive lineman as much. Or, you know, if, if, if there's one, maybe, but not two. So I'm still going offensive tackle here because there's certain things about Fushunu that's better than Joe Alt. I think mm -hmm. without seeing the tape, Ola is probably a better pass blocker than all. You know what I'm saying? He's because he's yeah. he's more sturdy. Olu could probably play guard too. He's more of a sturdy offensive lineman when it comes to you know his base level. Now, while I see the difference, Joe Alt is a much better, much better pass block or uh, run blocker. It, yes. That's Olu's problem. He's not. He's run blocking is okay. Joe Alt, that's his specialty, run blocking. So I would still go offensive tackle here if. Joe Alt's not available. I'll still Joe Alt. I'm, I'm gonna add some clarification to my my scenario. If Olu is gone as well, right? Because I I, I mm -hmm. do keep hearing, and I know that's 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 a real really. My, it might not actually be a a reality, right? Because you got the top six teams that don't want quarterbacks and 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 this and that. Yeah. But in my in my particular 
Jimmo, it would be if Olu is gone and Joe Wild is gone. You see what I'm saying? So that's just yep. that's my thought. But hey, great question. Great, great. And great, I'll great, tell you this, Jock. In, in that scenario, I'm going Dallas Turner all day. All day. I'm going yeah. defensive end. It's like if I can't get the tackle I want, I'm going the next premium position. That's defensive end. Right. Give me the SEC defensive player of the year, man. Give me the, yeah. the a guy that gave you gave you 10 sacks out there, six four, 250, man. Give me, give me Dallas. He runs a four four. Give me Dallas Turner all day. Mm -hmm. Yep. So again, if a draft board is this, and I, and I, I can imagine in those draft rooms, and and you prepare for the draft, you probably have like five draft boards of just scenarios that can play. Right? What if this happens? Absolutely. What if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? What if that happens? Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I'm approaching it in a way, man. If not, if they both gone, nah, man. Uh, -uh. we yeah. got to figure out something because I, J.C. Latham, in my opinion, uh, do you think he's worth the seventh round pick, J.C. The pick seven? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think so, man. I don't think so. I think I think more than anything, I think that, uh, you know, his issue is fluidity. He's not really fluid, nor is he. Mm -hmm. One thing about Alden and Fashanu, like when it comes to pass blocking, I mean, both of them move very well with their mm -hmm. feet. Latham right. is more of a dog, a kind of a, a hybrid guard tackle. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. no, I don't think so, man. No. He, he has very strong hands. His hands, just nothing I noticed on film, his hands are very strong, man. Yes. Strong hands. So that's something that I, that is a strength of his, but I agree. Yes. Um, yep. Yeah, so, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And so, uh, Colton Quiz uh, 15 says, thoughts on trading back in the second to get a third? Um, hmm. That, hmm. That's not a bad, that's actually not bad at all. That's not bad at all. And, I would and, say and I would say this, Colton Quince. I would say, man, it depends on how far we move in the second round. Because I think it's an advantage being the 38th pick of the draft in the second round because we need players, right? So if we trade back to get an extra third, I wouldn't go no more than 10 picks yep. from that spot. Nothing later than 48. And, and, and if you want to add a third, I would do it. I'd do it. I'd do it in a heartbeat, actually. But what about you, Jacques? Yes, I, again, I, like I iterated earlier, I am not moving more than five to six spots, and it's the same thing. It depends on how far I can go down, and then, again, if how bad you want them, I'll get a third, and plus, if I can get something next year, let me get your fourth-round pick or fifth-round pick next year, too, right? Yep. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm getting greedy. I, we need picks, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I like, I, I, that, I didn't think about that particular uh, scenario where, the second round pick could be in play to get a could we because again people third round picks do make the team they are pretty yeah. solid starters and they come in right away so i like that i like that yeah yeah you yeah. see v turner says tackle in the first and receiver in the second either way either way either way yep either way, either way. and that's what you know that's what we've been saying on most on all of our shows so far and i think it, we've kind of stuck that you know in, in the ground so to speak as far as tackle receiver first or second round either way uh we I, regardless I, to me man offensive tackle has to be picked in the first two rounds mm -hmm. we have to draft the offensive tackle for sure i would be disappointed i would really be kind of pissed off if we did not pick a, an offensive tackle in the first two rounds, rounds. yep right. see crew says who are you guys who are you guys you think we should target in the second round and fourth round i like to grab tackle like morgan and second best linebacker in the fourth um I wouldn't be opposed to that. Again, I like where you're going and just in case we do. So I think in your scenario where we get a receiver in the first round, you get your um, tackle in the second round, and then the best linebacker is still on the board in the fourth round. So maybe, again, that J.D. Uh, Venture in from Notre Dame might be there, right? Um, somebody that you can kind of say, okay, hey, fourth round, boom, we got him, let's go, right? Uh, what about you, Hawk? That's a good question. Um, in the fourth round, you know, I, I think that's a, you know, a very good scenario to draft a linebacker in the fourth round. Uh, you know, I think the key of it, too, is, OK, what type of linebacker are we looking for? You know, are we looking for an inside linebacker? Are we looking for a weak side linebacker? Things like that. Um, you know, I, there, there are linebackers out there in the fourth round. Um, I think one guy that I've seen that I really like, man, uh, there's a guy his name is uh he plays at texas and when i watched texas play his name was ford jalen ford uh would be available jalen ford is about six three uh rangy linebacker kind of plays all over the field uh if you get a talent like that in the fourth round which i think he'd be available i think his problem is he's a little he's a little light in the tail but mm -hmm. you get your playmaking linebacker in the fourth round hey go for it 
I'll be good with it. I'll be good with it. Speed, man. Speed, we, hey, y'all, we're doing our research. Believe mm -hmm. that. Oh, yeah. Oh, we yeah. love drafts, man. We love the draft. And if you continue to watch our show, you know, we're going to have our mock draft, a full mock draft, man. And for mm -hmm. those that have been watching us for years, know that many of the players that we say we should draft in certain rounds get, get picked in those rounds, and they turn out to be great ball players. So, mm -hmm. hey, they should be taking taking heed from us, man. We, we know yeah. about the Titans. The, for sure. the ties are sharp. The ties are sharp, draft. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, and, and again, another two, another thing that I analyze as well. Whenever there is a top 30 visit from the Titans, now they tend to draft that player. So if you pay attention to who they brought in for uh, a, a 30 visit, um, just pay attention because that really holds weight, if that makes sense, right? For sure, um, for sure. They've talked to him or anything like that. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Tyron Hooper, too. Uh, I think he's from Wake Forest. Uh, keep an eye on him. Also, he he had a, a visit. Uh, no, he's from Missouri. Excuse me, Missouri. He had a visit with the Titans. So, just keep an eye on him also. Like, if you, if you haven't watched any film, go check him out. Pretty solid. Absolutely. I did some homework on him as well. Um, be a good late-round guy you can bring in. And, and, and again, yeah. I still don't know what – how have you heard anything about the system that we're running on defense? And, uh, nope. Three, four, four, three? Nope. Okay. I doubt if they'll say anything, man. I wouldn't. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I doubt it. But, no, I haven't heard anything. I'm okay. not sure. And even if we heard anything, I don't believe it. I, you right, know, I, I would I would give out smoke screens too. I would be like, man, we're gonna we're gonna run a five two or something. I just yeah, kind of throw uh, things uh, off everybody. You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah. Like, so. You know what? That's the Baltimore Ravens. Be more defense, man. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We got a question right here from the powerhouse. Let's see. What do you, what do you say? Anthony Gold from Oregon State. Let me let me tell you about this guy, man. Anthony Gold. So I've seen this guy play, man, at Oregon State. All right. The Powerhouse 615. I, I guess you're from Nashville with the area code 615 in your name, man. Shout out to you. Anthony Gold, this guy is a playmaker punt returner. Pretty small guy, about 5'8". Um, this guy last year, man, made a lot of plays for Oregon State as a punt returner. He's very small. Um, and you know, if do we need speed? Absolutely. Do we lack speed on offense? Absolutely. So I could see a scenario because we, man, we had everybody returning punts last year, man. And it was, it was horrible, right? It was, we just, whoever could, they put Jeffrey Simmons even out. They just put whoever out there that could just catch a pass, ever catch a punt out there, man. So punt returner is a need. And if you look for a punt returner as a primary position, Seventh round would be where it would be. You know what I'm saying? So I like Anthony Gold. He's very small. Now, I'm not sure what he ran in the 40, but on the field, he's got superior speed. So I like him. We have a lot of other needs. You know what I mean? If we add some extra picks, then maybe. But that's kind of where I'm at with that, the powerhouse 615. Yeah. yeah yep. We just traded one seventh round pick away. So, again, like you said, if – and that to approach it that way, like, hey, you're just going to be our our returner, our punt returner and kick returner. That's your specialty. That's all you do. <laughs> yeah, but be pretty yep. solid. So. Yeah. So we'll go. We'll go about one more question. Thank you, by the way. Uh, C is that CC Rules Twenty Seven? He said, "Great content." Hey, we appreciate that, man. We really do. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah, the draft is yep. sneaking up on us, man. So it is. <laughs> it, it is sneaking up on us. A lot of, a lot of stuff is not coming out. Uh, I've heard this rumor that nobody's draft board is a final, final. I think only person, only teams draft first draft board, even first pick is Chicago Bears. We know they're getting Caleb. We know they're getting Caleb Williams is going in. There. We know that. Right, right, right. right. But I think, uh, but I've heard is nobody's draft board is is finalized. So, again, no telling what everybody, what every team is thinking. They're probably all thinking the same thing. But it's been kind of quiet. Real quiet. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. So, so Jacques, I'm gonna throw this question. I'm gonna throw this question out there, man. Everybody on the chat, man. Uh, so you all see at the top here, we got should the Titans trade the seventh pick, right? So, what do you all think? You know, let us know in the chat, Jacques. Should we trade this pick, bro? Okay. The question we ask: Will we? I'm asking you as the GM, GM, young Jacques, the lockdown corner, Nashville, Tennessee, born and raised. Should we trade the pick? I would say no. I would say no because you can get you can get talent in that particular position. I mean, how often is it? How often do we get a chance to pick in the top ten? Right? Yep. It's not very often. Okay. 
So I actually would like to stay put and pick pick what we can because again, I, in the in the scenario, I, Joe Alt will be there unless the Chargers want to say, "Hey, we need a a, a left tackle," right? Olu will be there. You'll have your your board your board is set up perfectly. Now the scenario that uh, I forgot who said it, C Cruz was it C Cruz where we can trade our second round pick. We have other picks that we can honestly trade to get more picks. So with that being said, no, I'm staying put. What about you? <sighs> Up to the draft, I'm staying put. Okay. When the draft starts, I'm staying put. Right? Mm -hmm. If they draft somebody, drafts Joe Alt. I would consider trading the pick. I would. If you can't get the tackle that you want, if they're high on his board, if he's gone, I'm trading the pick. But I'm only going down maybe four or five picks to get an extra second round. I prefer a second round pick. If we can't get a third, if we can get two second round picks, that would be huge. But if a team is looking for a quarterback, I'm like, hey, we need your first round pick too. We're going to have our first round pick and your first round pick. What are you thinking, right? If they go for that, I might go for it. I might go for it. I might. So I'm going in with it saying we ain't trading. We're right. we going to stay put at seven for sure. Okay. So. I like it. I like it. Well, we got more. Yeah. So Colton says, if O-line is took in the first, who would the wide receiver be in the second? I know, Hawk, you you said uh, – Adonis Mitchell. Mitchell. Oh, you said Adonis Mitchell. That's right. You Adonis Mitchell. But, I, but looking at looking at the draft boards and looking at well, how much he's moved, I mean, he's he might be a first-round pick. First round That's what's in the I would mm -hmm. say – Give me Brian Thomas from LSU. He will be available. What about you, Jacques? Uh, either Brian Thomas or Xavier Leggett from uh, South Carolina. Um, okay. And the reason why I say Xavier, I like his height. I like his. I like his his speed, his physical ability to break tackles. We 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 have speed. We you need a mix, right? Speed, strength, speed. Strength. And so either like again, Brian Thomas, I like him as well. You can't go wrong with him. You can't go wrong with LSU wide receivers. You just can't, right? Yeah. You can't go wrong with them. You just can't. So yeah. and, and with those two, whoever said we do hypothetically, which we probably will, pick a receiver. What happens in that in that standpoint is they don't have to come in and be the hero right away. Yeah. We still got yeah. D Hop and we got Calvin Ridley. They don't have to come in and and, and Prove nothing right away. So it makes it easier for them to kind of transition in, learn the offense, get in there, and facts, 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 start facts, to make facts, a name for yourself. Facts. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, could the questions yeah. come in? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, sure. Power yeah. Hour 615, Racing McMath, man. Uh, I think he's cracking the joke. Yeah, I know. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, so. Well, ladies and gentlemen, listen, we want to say thank you for those on Bleacher Report, man, with the fire questions, uh, as well as, you know, uh, you know, listening to us on the dialogue that we currently have. Uh, you know, as always, a Bleacher Report, we appreciate it as well, too. Uh, thank you all for joining in on the show and everything like that, man. If you have not checked us out, you can check us out on YouTube at Tennessee Titans Weekly, man. We're on Instagram at Tennessee Titans Weekly. We're on Twitter at Titans Weekly 24-7. We're on Apple. We're on Spotify. We are in these internet streets. We're out there, y'all. Check us out, man. Yep. And again, thank you, Bleacher Report, for giving us this opportunity. And again, thank y'all for bringing in the fire and the heat with these questions. Y'all keep our brains rolling. And let's just get to the draft, man. I'm, I'm eager to see what we have and anxious. And hey, tighten up. Tighten up. All day, y'all. Well, listen, we hope you all have a great rest of your week. Uh, we got some other shows coming up next week as well, man. So tune in. And Jacques, as we always say and as we always do, bro, facts. No paper.